Everyone, we're going to start with ceremonials. If members want to come up, I invite Commissioner Silver up. Good to see you, Commissioner. Good to see you. Good to see you, as always. So our first uh, ceremonial today, uh, Councilmember Chin is going to present, but before I hand it over to her, I want to just mention that we are so fortunate to be joined by some of our fantastic uh, parks officers, our PEP officers, who are here, who on Halloween of last year responded to a terrorist attack which started in my district at Houston Street and the West Side Highway and uh, took the lives of eight individuals and ended in Council Member Chin's district. And so we want to recognize their service to the city of New York. And I want to turn it over to Council Member Margaret Chin. Thank you, Speaker. I also wanted to uh, thank Council Member Salamanca uh, for helping to put this together, and also uh, Councilmember Gradenchek, who's the chair of the Parks Committee. Uh, it's great honor for us uh, to recognize the Park Enforcement Patrol officer who often don't get recognized mm. for the hard work that they do protecting our parks, our seniors, our children. Uh, so it's really a great opportunity for us to recognize their horrific you know, their um, effort uh, at that terrorist attack that happened last Halloween. And as the council member representing the area where the last Halloween's horrible terrorist attack occur, I'm happy to help honor members of the Park Enforcement Patrol for their bravery and courage. And, uh, and to thank them, especially uh, Captain Luz Carrion and her team who were right there when the incident happened. And instead of running away, these officers put themselves in harm's way to protect others. They were there helping the victims. Uh, and, and it's really uh, something that we really need to appreciate. And we owe all of them a debt of gratitude to these brave men and women who help ensure the safety of hundreds of local school, stu uh, local school students, parents, and passerbys. Once again, New Yorkers show the world that our city is truly about neighbors helping neighbors in a time of need. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for your service. And I'm going to ask the clerk uh, to read the proclamation. Council, City of New York proclamation. The New York City Council is proud to honor Hudson River Park's Park Enforcement Patrol officers for their courageous response to the October 31st, 2017 terrorist attack. And whereas New York, City, New York City's parks cover more than 30,000 acres of land, 14% of New York City, and Parks Enforcement Patrol, or PEP, officers help ensure they remain a safe environment for all to enjoy, whether they are members of the Park Security Service, Mounted Parks Enforcement Patrol, Mounted Auxiliary, Harbor Unit, the Honor Guard or Search and Rescue. PEP officers have distinct all green uniforms and unique special patrolman shields, allowing them to issue summonses and make arrests when needed as they patrol all five boroughs. On this occasion, it is a privilege to recognize a special group of PEP officers for their incredible service in the midst of a very dangerous attack. And whereas on Tuesday, October 31st, 2017, New Yorkers and tourists of every age and background were going about their lives in Lower Manhattan, not far from the Freedom Tower, many were leaving school or work, shopping or enjoying the park and bike lanes along the Hudson. It was a day that had begun full of promise, just like any other day in New York City. That afternoon, however, the day was shattered when a truck drove onto the Hudson River Park bike bicycle path at high speed and plowed into bicycles and pedestrians indiscriminately. In the end, an act of terror resulted in eight deaths and many injuries. And whereas New York, City's, New York City Park Enforcement Patrol officers immediately radioed central communications while officers ran to give aid to those who had been struck by the vehicle. Park Enforcement officers remained with the initial victims while others followed the path of the truck to assist additional victims in its path. 
PEF officers continued to function as support, ensuring that emergency personnel could do their jobs aiding the injured and stopping the perpetrator. And whereas, at a time where our city was struck by a terrorist attack, Parks Enforcement Patrol officers did not panic or shy away from the chaos and disorder, but remained calm, focused, and committed to providing any assistance they could. While we reflect on those who were killed or injured during this attack, as well as their friends and loved ones, we also reaffirm the resilience that defines us as a city. We commend these officers for their unwavering commitment to the safety of our city. They have truly excelled in their service and are worthy of the enduring gratitude of all New Yorkers. Now, therefore, be it known that the New York City Council gratefully honors the officers of Hudson River Park's Park Enforcement Patrol for their extraordinary service to our city and nation on October 31st, 2017. Corey Johnson, speaker for the entire council, Margaret S. Chin, Councilmember, 1st District, Manhattan. Raphael Salamanca, Jr., Councilmember, 17th District, The Bronx. Mark D. Levine, Councilmember, 7th District, Manhattan. Barry S. Credentia, Councilmember, 23rd District, Queens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I also want to thank Councilmember Salamanca for bringing this to our attention and and saying that these wonderful officers should be recognized here at a state meeting of the council. I want to thank the former parks chair, Mark Levine, who was parks chair when this horrible incident happened. And I want to thank our new chair of the parks committee, uh, Barry Grudenchik. And quickly, I want to allow our great parks commissioner, uh, Mitchell Silver, to make a few remarks as well. Well, first, uh, on behalf of the parks department and our Far parks and force patrol, Mr. Speaker, uh, Council Members Chen and Salamanca, I, I want to thank you. As was stated, uh, our PEF officers often go unnoticed. We have great heroes uh, in and cheeros in our city from NYPD and the finest and the boldest and the strongest. But we don't often know how often our peace officers, and that's what the Parks Enforcement Patrol, they're peace officers, uh, they do not have weapons. They enforce quality of life rules, but often put themselves in harm way, harm's way. Uh, you may not know, but they prevented kidnappings, sexual assaults, suicides, uh, as they're patrolling the park each and every day. And this particular day, uh, no one could imagine what a horrific event it was. And they turned out to be the first responders, the one that went to the scene and saw things that we could all say was un unmanageable. They not only went there first and contacted the other first responders, but they stayed. Uh, and I'm very proud of the fact that uh, they had the resilience and compassion to help those who are both injured and, of course, some that uh, are no longer with us. More importantly, I have to give a special recognition to Captain Luz Carrion. She understood how traumatic this event was for the officers and encouraged them through conversations and counseling to ensure that they would still remain strong and underscore the important work they do for the city. I thank you because, again, the PEP are not often recognized. They're heroes and sheroes that patrol all of our parks. They do an outstanding job, and we recognized them about a month ago, and I am so honored and pleased, and I know they feel the same way, that they can be in this really outstanding chamber to be recognized by the outstanding City Council of the City of New York. Thank you very much for this honor. So, thank you, Commissioner. So I'm going to allow uh, Captain Carrion to say a few words if she would like, but before we do that, I think we should take a moment of silence for the eight folks that we lost on that horrible day. Thank you. I want to give it to Captain Carrion. I just want to say thank you. Um, for recognizing what we do, um, not just for that one day, but in general, overall. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better team to be with. You know, they kept their professionalism. We, you know, everybody rose to the occasion. Um, that's all I can ask for. And then, L lastly, I want to read the names of some of the folks that were there that day who are with us here today, who are part of Captain Carrion's team. So, of course, we have Captain Luz Carrion, and I apologize if I mispronounce your name. You can correct me if I do that. Uh, we have Michelle Mason. We have Arshad Mohammed. 
We have Kyle Schnebel, Matthew Brooks, Christine Soto, Ashley Gopi, Malcolm Smiley, Antoinique Bedward, Nefertaria Walters, Cynthia Jones, and Darlene Francis. One big final round of applause for our amazing PEP officers. Thank you very much, Captain. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have another ceremonial. And this one is going to be uh, presented by Councilman Rulavine, I believe. Yes? So um, if, if council members could stay up here, we're going to have a ceremonial led by uh, our colleague, Councilman Mark Levine, in observance of National Mentoring Month. The New York City Council is proud to honor big brothers and big sisters of New York City, and I want to turn it over to Councilmember Levine. All right. Come on up. All right, I am pleased that in honor of National Mentoring Month, we are recognizing the incredible work of Big Brother, Big Sister. Let's give them a big round of applause. As a former Big Brother myself, I've experienced the incredible work of this organization up close for over 100 years, 110 years. How old are you guys? 114, I was selling you short. They have been touching young lives here in New York City. Uh, now I believe over 5,000 young people a year. And research has shown, and people who have been part of mentoring relationships know this instinctively, that to have a strong, positive adult in the life of a young person can change everything. And when you add it to the services that Big Brother Big Sis provides with social workers and academic enrichment, uh, it really can be a game change in the lives of kids, and our city is so, so lucky that we have them here as a resource. Um, do I cue the clerk now to read the rezo, and then we'll hear from our wonderful uh, CEO, Hector Figueroa. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you can please do the honors. Thank you. Council, City of New York Proclamation. In observance of National Mentoring Month, the New York City Council is proud to honor big brothers and big sisters of New York City for its extraordinary dedication to shaping the lives of countless young people across the five boroughs. And whereas National Mentoring Month is a time to celebrate those mentors who positively shape and influence the lives of children across the city. Whether they are family members or members of the community at large, they answer the call to service by mentoring a child in need and ultimately have a profound impact on the child's life. And whereas, through, men, through volunteering their time, support, love, energy, and guidance, they serve as mentors and positive role models, instilling valuable life skills and empowering <clears throat> young people to pursue their highest aspirations and realize their full potential. They are big brothers and big sisters from across New York City. And whereas, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City is the founding agency of the nation's youth mentoring movement. Since 1904, their mission has been to give children who face adversity an opportunity to experience strong, enduring, professionally supported, one-to-one -one mentoring relationships with adults that help change their lives for the better. They partner with families, volunteers, organizations, and the community to inspire po positive change in all. 
And whereas every year the organization connects more than 5,000 children with a big who can help them believe that their present situation doesn't have to be their future. And whereas big brothers and big sisters have transformed lives of struggle into lives of opportunity where success is attainable. By establishing a strong connection between children and responsible adults, they have changed the course of communities across our city for generations to come. They have earned our gratitude and recognition not only this month but throughout the year. Now therefore be it known that the Council of the City of New York proudly honors big brothers and big sisters of New York City for their extraordinary service and enduring contributions to New York City and the nation. Corey Johnson, Speaker for the entire Council, and Mark D. Levine, Council Member, 7th District, Manhattan. Thank you. I, I also uh, want to acknowledge the Chair of our Youth Services Committee and an incredible advocate for mentoring, the great Debbie Rose, and our uh, immediate past chair, and longtime champion of youth services, Dr. Matthew Eugene. And I would like to pass the mic to the incredible leadership of Big Bro, Big Sis in New York City, uh, the great Hector Batista. Well, uh, thank you, Councilman Levine. I, I want to thank you for, uh, for hosting us today. I want to first uh, also want to thank the speaker, and I want to thank the city council for all your support. Because of your support over the last couple of years, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of New York City has been able to double the amount of kids that we service. 54% we're servicing more, more kids now because of your support. I'm also very excited to tell you that we just recently launched a new strategic plan, and our plan has some really new programs that we're trying to launch. One that I just sent you an invitation for that I hope you, you will come. We're launching our first LGBTQ program where we're going to really work with young people in this community. It took me a couple of years to put that program together because in our organization, even though we're a mentoring organization, we want to do it responsibly. So we talked to a lot of people in the field to assure that we were doing this the right way. And we really believe that this population, we service kids who really use our help. As you know, they're ending homelessness, bullying, they're ending in prison, and this, these youth really deserve a program like ours with positive role models in their life. We're also going to be launching a, a program that's going to focus on the Muslim community because we service kids, right? And we don't care from what are, what are the issues. We really try to do programs to help that population. As you know, those youth are really having a lot of challenges here in New York and throughout the country. We couldn't do any of the work that we do without the support of the, of the city council. It's a partnership. Uh, Councilman Rodriguez and a lot of other the council members, Rose, who've been really champions of our organization. And Councilman Eugene, when he was heading up the, the, uh, the committee, we really want to thank you for all your support and for the recognition. I, I'm very lucky to lead an amazing team of people. I get credit for all their great work, and uh, they really are very talented. And every single day, they're really helping young people find their way. And I'm going to give you a little promotion. 99% of our kids are getting promoted to the next grade. 97% of them are graduating from high school. And 94% of them are getting accepted into college. So those are really That's remarkable amazing. stats. All right. Thank you. Thank you for the recognition. All right. That's it. One more big round of applause for the staff at Big Brothers and Big Sisters for all the work that they do. Thank you all very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Good to see you, Hector. Good to see you.
Okay, we're going to get started. If folks could take their seat. <clears throat> Quiet on the floor, please. Quiet on the floor, please. At this time, please place all electronic devices, all electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you.